Junia or Junias Greek, Ionia, Ionias, Ionia S was a first-century Christian highly regarded and complimented by Paul the Apostle. The view among most modern New Testament scholars is that this person was a woman named Junia, Ionia but a common view in the past was that it was a man named Junias, Ionias or Ionias the latter being the Hebrew name Yohani. Paul the Apostle may have considered this person an apostle. He wrote in Romans chapter 16 verse 7, Aspasast andronikon kai ionian tu singines mo kai sinike melotis mo oitins eisen episimoi en toi apostol wa oi kai pro emo geganen en Christ. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen, and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. Scholarly debate The translation of the verse presents two problems. If the name was accented on the last syllable, then it would be a man. Early New Testament manuscripts do not use accent marks. Sources differ on where the accent appears in accented manuscripts, but in the 20th century it was common to put the accent on the last syllable. The phrase translated, of note among the apostles, KJV, can be read two ways, as illustrated by the two readings in the NIV, outstanding among, NIV main text, or esteemed by. Niv footnote, these two questions are still under scholarly debate. <inaudible> Junia's apostleship Grammatical <inaudible> 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 issue, prominent among, or well known to <inaudible> The meaning of outstanding among the apostles is rendered by some translations as well known to the apostles suggesting that the couple were not apostles but enjoyed a high reputation among the apostles some new testament scholars consider that the greek phrase episemos n plus dative literally noted among does not automatically demand that the noted person is a member of the group among whom the person is noted a well known example of this grammatical construction is found in euripides Hippolytus 101-3 where the goddess Aphrodite is famous episemos among mortals, but evidently is not included as being among the mortals. For this reason some versions, such as the ESV, translate the Greek phrase as well known to, unlike other versions such as NRSV which translate prominent among. Those who have argued for the ESV translation include Michael Burrer and Daniel Wallace who agree that Junia was a woman but assert that the correct rendition of the Greek text places her as well known to the apostles rather than prominent among the apostles. That translation would indicate that the pair were not apostles, but that they enjoyed a high reputation among the apostles, Linda Belville, Richard Bockham, and Ildon Epp, who take the reading. Prominent among, have taken on the task of correcting some findings pertaining to Junia. Bockham devotes several pages to interacting with, refuting, and correcting the Burr and Wallace article. The phrase episemos n is in bold italics in the following comparison of translations of Romans chapter 16, verse 7. Greek, Aspasast andronikon kai ionian tus singines mo kai sinike melotis mo oitins eisen episemoi en toi apostolwa. Vulgate, Salutate andronicum et ionium, cognatos et concaptivos meos, qui sunt nobiles in apostolis. KJV, Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen, and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles. NRSV. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my relatives who were in prison with me, they are prominent among the apostles. ESV. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners. They are well known to the apostles. <laughs> Gender bias Gilbert Beletzikian sees gender bias in the KJV, ESV, and other translations of Romans chapter 16 verse 7 that provide the masculine term, kinsmen, for the gender-neutral term for relatives, or compatriots, although the KJV and ESV use the feminine name, Junia. He argues that it is improbable that Paul would have had six kinsmen 
In Rome at the same time, Rom, 6 to 7, 11, 21. Topic: Paul and Andronicus and Junia. Topic: Classicist Evelyn Stagg and New Testament scholar Dr. Frank Stagg believe that Paul is competent to endorse the couple as apostles on the basis of his own involvement with them. Beletzikian agrees. Paul. S. references to the couple. S. imprisonment with him and to the time of their conversion relative to his own would give him no need to defer to the opinion of others as a source of credentials. He writes that Paul would have little interest in deferring to the opinion of others as a source of credentials. The Stags and Beletzikian maintain that both the context and the content of this verse require that it be read naturally as Paul's commendation of Andronicus and Junias not only as remarkable Christian workers, but as members of the larger group commonly called apostles, such as Silas, Timothy, and others. Richard Bockham argues for identifying Junia with Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Joanna, being her Jewish name, and Junia. Her Roman, moving past the name and gender debate, the way Paul acknowledges the apostleship of Andronicus and Junia in Romans chapter 16 verse 7, coupled with his stating they were in Christ before me, converted to Christ before Paul was, indicates that the couple's apostleship did not hinge on Paul's recognition of their status. There are two main discussions regarding Paul's intentions behind his greeting to Junia and Andronicus. The first discussion proposes that Junia was a Hellenized Jew, and that she belonged to Paul's law-free mission to the Gentiles. In that scenario Paul is seen to be reinforcing the couple's gospel by praising them. The other possibility is that Junia belonged to the more conservative element of the early Christian movement such as Jewish Christianity Jews that still maintained the importance of the Jewish law. Martin Hengel has proposed that the Roman congregation was founded by the Hellenist, which was a group of Greek-speaking Jews that belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, associated with Stephen, who openly abandoned the Jewish law. The evidence points to Junia belonging to this movement and her geographical location indicates that Junia would have been one of the earliest founders of the Roman Christian community. However, no matter with whom Junia associated, all the conjecture about her allegiances presupposes Junia to have been a woman of great prestige. Gilman claims that for her to have been called an apostle, she needed to have a post-resurrection experience of Jesus and a divine commissioning. He believes she was most likely among the 500 that Paul mentions to have received a Christophany, 1 Cor 15-1-11 Beletzikian disagrees and places her among the post-resurrection Christian disciples who had never seen Christ but who were pioneer missionaries, such as Apollos, 1 Cor, 4-6-9 Epaphroditus, Phil, 2-25 Sylvanus and Timothy, 1 These, 1-1, cf. 2-6 Junia was a popular name for nobility. It is also of note that Junia possesses a Latin name which could have stemmed from servile origins. This could mean that she was a freed slave who adopted the name of her patron. Alternatively as previously mentioned, Junia could have belonged to a family of Hellenized Jews. According to Harry Leon, it was commonplace during this period for Greek-speaking Jewish families to give their daughters Latin names and their sons Greek names, hence the Greek name of Andronicus. Further, 75% of the 517 names found in the six Jewish catacombs of ancient Rome are Greek names. Junia's relationship with Andronicus is somewhat ambiguous. While it is generally supposed that they were husband and wife, they could have been siblings or simply a team of evangelists. What is important is that Junia is referred to in her own right, not as an attachment to someone else. This means that she earned her title and position on her own merit, rather than it being simply a natural derivation from her husband's status. A popular work exploring Junia has been published by journalist Rena Peterson. This book has been reviewed in the Toronto Star. The opposing interpretation of this verse disavows both Junia's apostleship and her female gender. Complementarians believe that the Bible limits or prohibits women leadership roles in the church, and requires male leadership, female submission in marriage. Christian egalitarianism, on the other hand, holds that all human persons are created equally in God's sight, have equal responsibility to use their gifts and obey their calling to the glory of God, and are called to roles and ministries without regard to class, gender, or race. Topic. Junia's sex 
Topic. The consensus among some modern New Testament scholars is that Junia was a woman. The first reference to Junia as a male comes from Origen late 2nd early 3rd century. This is also the earliest comment on Junia's gender in general. However, this version only appears in a relatively late medieval copy of Origen's work, which appears to originally speak of Junia as a female. In the 4th century Junia is considered male by Epiphanius of Salamis. There are, however, doubts about the reliability of his opinion, since he provides the wrong gender for Prisca, another biblical character. There are later references as well, e.g. Egidius of Rome also called Giles of Rome in English, ca. 1243-1316 in the late Middle Ages, though without explanation. Two centuries later, in 1512, Jacques Lefebvre also considered Junia a man, even though in the Latin translation available to him the name was clearly feminine. U.S. journalist Rena Peterson argues that medieval translators such as the 13th century Giles of Rome changed her name to Junias, as a reflection of an institutional prejudice against women that stretched back to ancient Greek scholars. She argues that the growing acknowledgement of Junia's female apostleship will establish an important precedent for women preaching and teaching. And since Paul often has been viewed as someone who wanted to keep women quiet, his praise for Junia seems to show that he was much more broad-minded in practice," Peterson adds. Stephen Finlan notes that in the Corinthian and Roman letters, Paul addressed a number of women as leaders. However, Finlan also affirms that Junia is the only female apostle named in the New Testament. He writes that Junia is clearly a female name that was changed to the male, Junias, in the Latin translations of the New Testament although this contradicts the above statement that in the Latin translations the name was clearly feminine. In Paul's identification of her as a relative, as being, in Christ, before him and being, prominent among the apostles. Finland finds it significant that Paul greeted her as among the apostles in a straightforward, matter-of-fact way as if there was nothing unusual about a female apostle. The problem of translating the name arises because, when the New Testament was composed, Greek was normally written without accents, although these had already been invented. If written with an acute accent on the penultimate syllable, Ionian the name could be Junia, a woman's name, although it could also be a man. S name, Ionias if with a circumflex accent on the final syllable, Ionian it is, Junias, a man's name. No conclusion can be drawn from the masculine gender of the associated words in the same verse, since they apply also to the male Andronicus. Accordingly, even if Junias is a woman, the rules of Greek grammar put those words in the masculine form. According to one reference, when accents were added in manuscripts in the 9th century most have the accent on the last syllable Ionian and not necessarily out of male chauvinism, since some scribes were women. However, another source maintains that all accented manuscripts have the accent on the penultimate. In his book Junia, the first woman apostle, Ep gives a textual critical evaluation of the history of Junia in the Greek text and also the search in non biblical Greek literature for Junias, the alleged masculine form of the name which has not been found in writings from New Testament times and only rarely thereafter. He points out that the earliest copies of the Greek texts for Romans chapter 16 verse 7 are majuscules capital letters. There are no accent marks in them. The importance of this is that the gender of the name depends on the accentuation. Hence, the earliest texts are inconclusive and we are very dependent on patristic interpretation for the gender of Junia. When the minuscules using lower case Greek letters appeared, Junia was accented with a character which may indicate the feminine form of the name though see below the theory that there was a masculine name accented on the second syllable. The feminine form of the name appeared in Erasmus. Critical Greek text in 1516 and continuously thereafter in all other critical Greek texts, with the exception of Alfred. S. 1858 edition, until 1928 when Nestle inexplicably read, he didn. T. explain it in the apparatus went to the masculine form. This remained the case until the 1998, when the edition just as inexplicably went back the other way and the masculine was dropped as even an alternative not in the apparatus. 
Hence, the textual weight seemed to be for the feminine name Junia, which text critic Ildan Epp in 2005 believed most scholars accept. However, the masculine form is preferred in the UBS New Testament, 4th edition, which matches the 27th edition of the Nestle Allen text the latest editions of each text, two Greek manuscripts have Julia, clearly a woman's name, instead of Junia's, in this verse. One is Papyrus P46 of about the year 200, while the other is the 13th century minuscule manuscript catalogued as 6. Julia is also the reading in some manuscripts of the Old Latin Bible and Vulgate, in one tradition of Coptic manuscripts and in Ethiopic manuscripts. Three Greek uncial manuscripts have the inverse substitution, Junias, in place of Julia, in Romans chapter 16 verse 15. This raises the question whether the proximity of the two names, Junias, and Julia, on the same page is the reason why, in both cases, a few scribes replaced one name with the other. Only one record of the male name, Junias, has been discovered in extra-biblical Greek literature, which names him as the Bishop of Apamea of Syria. Three clear occurrences of, Junia, have been found. While earlier searches for, Junias, in Latin also yielded no evidence, it is reported that, Junias, has been found as a Latin nickname or diminutive for the name, Junianas, which was not uncommon both in Greek and Latin. While this is a possibility, historical studies on the name Junia as a contracted form of Junianas has shown there are over 250 citations of the name Junia in antiquity all of which have been found to refer to women, with not one single case proven to be the abbreviated form of Junianus to Junia. Meanwhile, the name Junia is attested multiple times on inscriptions, tombstones and records, most notably, the half-sister, Junia Secunda, of Marcus Junius Brutus, among the early church fathers, the United Bible Societies the Greek New Testament only cites Jerome as having read the name, Julia, in Romans chapter 16 verse 7 and Chrysostom as having understood the name as the feminine, Junia. Chrysostom wrote, Oh how great is the devotion of this woman that she should be counted worthy of the appellation of apostle. Although among the fathers, an almost universal sense that this was a woman's name surfaces, at least through the 12th century. This must be couched tentatively because although at least 17 fathers discuss the issue, see Fitzmyer's commentary on Romans for the data, the majority of these are Latin fathers. And Junia but not Junias was a common enough name in Latin. It has even been claimed that the first known mention of Junia as a male is by Giles of Rome, Agatus of Rome, 1245 to 1316. Though this ignores the evidence of the Greek manuscripts about how the name was actually interpreted at least from the 9th century onward. The Coptic Synaxarium reading for the 23rd of Bashans identifies Junia the Apostle as being a man of the tribe of Judah. Epiphanius 315-403 ad, in Index of Disciples says, Junias, of whom Paul makes mention, became bishop of Apamea of Syria. In Greek, the phrase, of whom, is a masculine relative pronoun who, and shows that Epiphanius considered Junias to be a man. And in a Latin quotation from Origen, died AD 252, in the earliest extant commentary on Romans, says that Paul refers to Andronicus and Junius and Herodian, all of whom he calls relatives and fellow captives. Origen's commentary on Romans, preserved in a Latin translation by Rufinus, ca. 345 ca. 410 AD, in J.P. Migni, Petrologia Graeca, Volume 14, Call 1289. The name Junius here is a Latin masculine singular nominative, implying that Origen, who was one of the ancient world's most proficient scholars, thought Junius was a man. In a 2008 JBL article, Al Wolters argued that Ionian, accented on the second syllable, was the accusative case of Ionias, being a Hellenized form of the Hebrew name Yehuni, which is normally a man's name. He has been followed in this by Bruce Waltke. Topic. Orthodox traditional views Topic. Orthodox traditions say Junia and Andronicus of Pannonia traveled extensively and preached the gospel to pagans, many of whom were converted to Christianity. Many of the pagan temples were closed, and in their place Christian churches were built. 
Junia and Andronicus are believed to have suffered martyrdom for Christ. The female identity of Junia was accepted without objection during the first twelve centuries of the Church, according to the writings of the Church Fathers. Paul's enthusiastic acclamation of Junia prompted Chrysostom, prominent Church Father, to marvel at her apparent devotion such that she would be even counted worthy of the appellation of Apostle. Some scholars see Romans chapter 16 verse 7 as proof that Paul the Apostle, whose name is ascribed to fourteen epistles in the New Testament, encouraged female leaders in the Church. A number of more recent translations committed to complementarianism present both Andronicus and Junius as males. Most recent studies, however, are preoccupied with the gender of the name, and not so much with apostleship. Apostle in the New Testament Topic. According to Professor and Pastor Gilbert Beletzikian, the term apostle connotes the highest level of leadership and authority in the early church. 1 Cor. 1228 EPH 220, 3-5 Initially, only the original disciples, meaning students, learners of Jesus were called apostles, meaning those sent forth with a mission. After Jesus' resurrection, the designation was given to missionaries involved in establishing churches and who saw the resurrected Christ before his ascension. This included more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time. And then Paul himself, 1 Cor. 15-6 After that, the appellation of apostle was extended to Christian disciples who had never seen Christ but who were pioneer missionaries, such as Apollos, 1 Cor. 4-6-9 Epaphroditus, Phil. 2-25 Silvanus and Timothy, 1 These, 1-1, cf. 2-6 The description of apostles as one of the three higher spiritual gifts that Christians should desire 1 Cor. 1228, cf. 31 is evidence of continued accessibility to this ministry for qualified persons. They could aspire to become apostles, prophets, or teachers. Beletzikian writes that the term, apostle, was still used in this broad sense in the post apostolic writing of the Dadash. The Apostle Paul also refers to some of his associates as co workers or fellow workers. The same people he calls apostles are also referred to as his co workers, suggesting an intent to provide some interchangeability between the terms apostles and co workers. Paul applies the title co-worker to several women Priscilla Rom 16 to 3 Eodia and Sintish Phil 4 to 2 minus 3 topic see also topic Deborah feminist theology Lydia of Thyatira Phoebe topic notes Topic. Topic. Other references. Topic. Gieseler, Michael E. Junia, The Fictional Life and Death of an Early Christian. Scepter Publishers, 2002. ISBN 978-1-59417-078-2. Peterson, Rena. The Lost Apostle: Searching for the Truth About Junia. Wiley Press, 2006. ISBN 978-0-470-18462-2 Riss, Catherine J. The Apostle Junia. Women in Church History, Women's Ministries in the Early Church. Webb, 7 January 2010. The Apostle Junia Wills, Gary, 2007. What Paul Meant. Penguin. pp. 90-92.